I'd like to think that the, the stream of investors who are looking at Ireland uh, will continue to be strong because the next wave of growth is going to be on Irish companies that can supply competency in the internet area or ICT or wherever it is uh, to service the needs of, of companies that continue to want to uh, invest here, expand here and grow here. And that's why, uh, if I may say so, uh, the decision that was made 40 years ago was a very important decision for the country and we've gained immensely from the European Economic Community and the European Union. On the 31st of May, people are going to be asked to make an equally important decision which goes beyond the lifetime of any government because it continues into the future. And what we need is uh, a decision about certainty, that we send out a signal to the world that Ireland knows where it is, that Ireland knows where it's headed, and that Ireland knows where it wants to be. And that those companies are investors in our country who are considering investing in Europe now, see that flare, and can say that that, that yes vote guarantees access to an insurance policy if it was ever required. That it also means that there need be no slacking off in the in the, in, in the investment uh, line that's coming in here, which is so important for the mylands of this world, or Apple, or Microsoft, or Eli Lilly, or PayPal, or Hewlett Packard, who've made these decisions in the last number of months. We don't want any break in that. So when people say to me, you should put off this referendum, I say, on the other hand, what we need is we need certainty, and we need it now. The treaty is very clear. You ratify according to your own process under your constitution, you ratify before the end of the year, we choose our time. This is Ireland's decision and not anybody else's. Uh, and we, we want to have people properly and fully informed so that they know that. Uh, so uh, it, it, the, the third element of that is that it allows us as a government and as a country to put in place regulations and conditions in our own law here that will allow that no, no government, including governments of my own party in the future, can ever again run riot with the people's fortunes or the people's money, that there's both a preventive and a corrective system put in there. And I think that leads to good housekeeping, which is in the interest particularly of the next generation, that we don't crucify them with the faults of their, the faults of their, of their fathers or grandfathers, as the case might be. Um, so I've been arguing for a long time that Europe needs this growth strategy, and I'm delighted that that's happening on the 23rd. Now, one of the areas for growth for us, clearly, is the, is the whole... Um, digital industry. And the fact that we have in Ireland the presence of the world's leading ICT companies confirms our position as a leading location in Europe for the digital sector. That's obvious to you. You know, you know this stuff uh, intimately. We committed in the Jobs Action Plan 2012 a number of actions to, to drive growth in the ICT sector. And improving that ICT infrastructure is clearly a priority. Now, look, we've messed around with this for too long. We are not where we should be, but we are going to be where we want to be. And just last week, Minister Rabbit published the, uh, the report of the Next Generation Broadband Task Force, which was comprised of the CEOs, as you know, of the leading telecoms providers in Ireland. And that report highlights where the government and industry can work together to make a real impact. And I want this to happen, and we're going to see that it will happen, because the the process of consultation is now on. It's only going to last for a few weeks. And I hope that by July we can have a clear, definitive strategy for this industry for the future. We set aside um, a four-week consultation period, and you're all, uh, you're all uh, invited to participate in that. Uh, and when that's completed, we'll publish a national broadband plan that will set out the actions that government intend to take to ensure proper delivery of, uh, of uh, services future. I've been in so many schools, and you go into the room, and all the computers are there, and no broadband. Um, and I see, I see first years in some schools with the tablets, and they're all set up to go, and it's like a drip from a tap. can't work. So that's fixed now by government. Contractors have been appointed. Tenders are awarded. Get on with that business and sort it out. Um, so we're also committed to uh, enhancing, if you like, the skills supply pipeline for ICT in the high-tech sectors including through implementation of the action plan on ICT skills. And when I look at the websites of some of our educational institutions, I still see, you know, um, so much of the traditional stuff, be it childcare or hairdressing or this, that or the other. 
Like, and when I talk to the high-tech companies, are you getting what you need from Ireland? In the majority of cases, yes, but clearly there are areas where there are niche, there are niche uh, requirements. Um, I often quote this, Bob Savage, the CEO of EMC in Cork. I spoke to 2,000 engineers down there, and he said, like, is there somebody here who's going to create the next Facebook? If you are, step forward. We want to, we want to give you every assistance. Um, so uh, the thing that I like is that when you get all these people together, the energy coming off them, the creativity, the imagination is what's going to drive Ireland forward because we, I think when we're challenged and given that kind of direction, we perform best. So we want to continue to lead that debate, if you like, on how to develop a more dynamic digital enterprise um, sector across Europe. And I think that our country is in a position actually to lead this debate and set down foundations that other countries can actually follow and say there is best practice as applied in Ireland. So, you know, we can, I think we can develop a really dynamic and a flexible environment that encourages digital innovation. Because that world is changing as we speak. Nanotechnology, the internet, robotics, genetics, all these things are moving at such a pace where technology is impacting on them. Um, there are two main challenges uh, that I see up ahead. One is copyright protection and the other is data protection and privacy issues. Uh, these are areas of enormous com com uh, complexity and sensitivity. But it's important clearly that the government and the EU develop policies that represent you know, a practical and a balanced approach to the rights of the individual, copyright holders and entrepreneurs. And here at home, the Copyright Review Committee recently published a very broad-ranging consultation paper, and they've invited further submissions from interested parties. They will be evaluated and assessed. A report will be prepared for government to set out the recommendations for legislative change, including change at EU level if that be required. And all of you who have an interest in this, please feel free to make your observations on the paper as published and how you think it should be uh, progressed. I want to express my gratitude to the Irish Internet Association for providing an online mechanism uh, to collate its own members' views and to gather them together for submissions on that consultation paper. Uh, I also mentioned uh, the European Commission has recently produced proposals for a new comprehensive data protection framework at European Union level. This is clearly important. Minister Shatter launched a consultation process at the beginning of March uh, on these proposals and seeking views on them. And the inputs of uh, you know, individual bodies and organisations have been positive and helpful. Uh, the, the reason I mention this is that these are probably likely to be concluded during the Irish presidency of the Union from the 1st of January to June of next year, which is all the more reason why uh, a, a very strong vote of credibility in ourselves on the 31st of May lends further leverage and credibility and respect for this country, assuming the presidency at the start of, uh, the start of January next year. So we've seen all these high-profile investments in the country. They're bringing new opportunities and new jobs. I want to continue that momentum. I want to open the doors of opportunity at home for our own entrepreneurs, the young people coming through, to, to build and put in place the pieces of the jigsaw for Ireland's future economic uh, fortune and well-being. So I'd like to send a message to the world uh, that just as this country led in so many areas over the centuries, that we're now at a position of, of, of um, critical times for Europe. And yet here's a small country that has moved a long way in 12 months from where we were to a point where we've got a, we've got a clear course ahead of us. But I think it was Louis McNeese who said, you know, by, by a high star our course is set. Uh, so we have our objective in mind and we want everybody to participate in this. Um, I've often said that Irish people are exceptionally pragmatic and when they understand the scale and depth and nature of a problem, They'll always want to help to sort it out. But don't try to pull the wool over their eyes and say that everything is rosy in the garden because we know the challenges that we face. You are a fundamental part of this um, country, of this economy. You employ people. You have the potential to employ more. You have the potential to add to our reputation internationally as being a country that is moving to be recognised as the best small country in the world in which to do business. I will not move off that ambition becoming a reality. And insofar as the levers of government are, are, are to be moved, 
they are available to this industry and to every other industry to see that we can achieve what we know uh, is our potential. That's within the, within the confines, of course, of, of doing things that are, that are right and proper for the benefit of the country and the people.